Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Torrent and welcome back to Heart Farm 4 as we are playing as the Soviet Union. So, I hope everybody has an excellent Christmas if you celebrate the holiday this weekend. I personally do not celebrate Christmas, and that's for a multitude of reasons. I know people will ask why if I don't don't at least briefly address it. Basically, I never celebrated it when I was a kid. I had uh, drug addict parents. So we were really, really poor. Uh, you know, we didn't have food to eat often. We lived out of our car for a while. So Christmas wasn't really a priority uh, in my family. So I never celebrated it when I was a kid. So I don't really have that tradition of it. And from that to the fact that I'm not really religious, I'm not a Christian. Uh, so I don't really have any religious reasons to celebrate it. And then overall, I just find the holiday be you know, very over commercialized. Due to those three factors, I never really had any reason to celebrate the holiday. But for all of those who do celebrate it, I hope you have an excellent Christmas. And to those of you who, like me, don't celebrate it, I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, so this will likely be the finale series, uh, the finale episode, excuse me, uh, because I expect the Japanese will capitulate. Uh, the Americans are uh, advancing fairly quickly. They've had, it looks like, three yeah, three successful invasions. It looks like we joined the war a little bit late. Uh, I was expecting that we'd be the ones to invade them and uh, take them out. And so now we're at the point, you know, Japan has 33% towards capitulation and we have no war participation. And a big part of that is because I think China likely has the most. Yeah, 49%. They've been fighting them for a very long time, lost 3 million men. So not surprising there. Uh, overall, uh, they killed 2.7 million. So they actually did really good on casualties. Uh, and, and part of that is because we gave them that extra tick up. Remember they had like two ticks up. I think Japan only had one. So I'm sure that influenced it a bit. And of course the reason why I did that is because in my previous two test campaigns, China did horrible against Japan. They were defeated really, really quickly. But I mean, that did not happen in this one. I don't think the one extra tick up would make that big of a difference though. Uh, honestly, I think it was just a matter of uh, luck. Sometimes, sometimes one country does really bad in a campaign. Sometimes they do really, really well. Just kind of depends and and this one japan just did really really horrible and, and i think the tick up probably you know influenced some of that that china had that little bonus but honestly i don't think it would make this big of a difference yes we've done that before we've given china one tick up over japan and didn't see anything like this before so i really don't think that that's uh why it happened although it didn't help i think it was more than anything japan just i don't know they just kind of sunk in this one uh, you notice they didn't do all those invasions as well. They weren't as successful. Uh, you know, they got French into China just by asking for it. But yeah, they weren't really successful in the invasions here in Malaysia, the Dutch East Indies or anything. So they didn't get all those resources. I'm sure that hurt them. They did well in the Philippines. Uh, but yeah, uh, I wasn't expecting Japan to be defeated so quickly. And thus, we might not be able to get much of anything in this, this war. And I might not even declare war on Finland in that case because... If that happens, we won't be able to do anything with them uh, because we don't have any war participation right now. Now, if we're the one occupying them, then sure. But, you know, I was thinking that we were just going to get them in the peace treaty as a minor country. We don't have the defeat and then just annex them. Uh, not that we had actually occupied them because, you know, I don't know how well we're going to push forward here. Uh, we might do OK uh, in some of these areas, but... Yeah, I don't expect that it's going to be like a rapid push forward. I mean, we're still trying to fix the supply over here. I wouldn't want to attack without having those rails built. And, and I guess we wouldn't have the supply hubs built, would we? They take too long. So it might not even do the war against Finland. I, I think that's fine, honestly. I think this looks weird not having this state here. Uh, we could always ask for it, I guess, with our next focus. Because we get this done in six days. So I suppose you could do that. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if we'll declare war on Finland because the war is going to end so quickly. And I would really like to build it at least get this here. So if we wanted to do that, we would need to give them more troops that are closer because we sent more troops over here. Uh, but those guys are kind of far away. I mean, they might get here. I mean, I guess they're not that far away. What we could do instead move these guys over here and then take, let me see here. Take like one of these guys, put them over here. And then take two divisions from over here since this is as close as it gets. So we'll have some actual attacking divisions over here because we could push forward. In fact, this guy might even be able to push forward when this defense is up. But I'd really like to take that there. Uh, also, we've got the strategic bombers set up here. Uh, it should be 400 once some of these reinforce here. So 400, uh, well, 300 strategic bombers and the one tactical bomber wing we have. Uh, they'll be bombing here. That'll get us some points. If we sink any ships, that'll get us points. And then obviously taking this territory would get us points. But it might not be enough to do much of anything in the peace treaty. We'll just have to see, guys. Uh, we'll we'll try and get as much 
as much as we can. All right, so these guys are sweeping down here. I suppose we'll have them come cut these guys off here. Yeah, we want to make sure that our, our troops are continuing to push forward here at all times. Uh, I guess we can go to cut those. Oh, they're actually already about to be cut off, so we'll go. I suppose it doesn't matter, huh? We got people going everywhere. Yeah, because they're already taking that one for us. Uh, so let's go ahead and have these guys come over this way while they'll attack over here. Uh, we got three units. They should be able to do that just fine. While the rest of these... We got some of them moving elsewhere. Now let's just make sure that these units here come over to this front. I don't think it's necessary to have all these guys over here. All right, excellent. So they'll all get moving over to this front. Let's see if there's anybody else that needs to be cut off. We got somebody here uh, already grabbing that province. So let's go ahead and have Amber in that one as well. So let's have both of these units come over here. And then he can go over to this front. And... Looks like we need to move here and grab these provinces. Got those guys there wiped out. Fantastic. Uh, and we have some, some battles going over here where we're engaging Japanese troop convoys. It's interesting. Uh, about to finish this up, and I think we're going to go and attack immediately. We might not even need those offensive troops because this defensive unit might be able to do it simply because that guy is so weak. And uh, then we did lose one of our submarines down here, unfortunately. All right, so that's kind of a shame. Now, those are all casualties, though, so I suppose that helps us. Uh, the more casualties we take, the the more points we'll have in the peace treaty. <laughs> I guess that's one way to look at it. Uh, I guess we're going to grab that victory point over there. Yeah, just keep on moving. Moving as quickly as we can. We have these tanks really push forward here. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and grab any uh, provinces over here. Uh, this guy lost against him. Let's go this way instead, then. Uh, and then I guess we'll have him go this way. It looks like they're trying to uh, beat us out of here. Don't want any of that. Now, I had another battle over here. I'm hoping to sink some actual ships. Uh, just those two troop convoys. Which, of course, we don't get any points for causing casualties, so that doesn't help us. Uh, but I guess we don't have to fight them here, so that's one advantage. Uh, let's go ahead and have... I don't know what all these guys are doing here. Let's just have them push forward. Is this guy, like, defending or something? Or he already moved over to here, I see. Uh, any units that are over here that are not these two guys that need to stay on this front. Yeah, let's go ahead and just get everybody pushing forward here. And you know what? Actually, let's go this way. And he'll go that way. Uh, go ahead and grab that province as well. We got these tank units. Let's go ahead and just separate them so they can start pushing down south. And let's go ahead and push forward over here. And here, although it looks like these guys are all assigned to this front. Yeah, they're assigned to that front. So let's go ahead and make sure they're on this front. Have them push forward here. Just really going after those victory points so we can get them to capitulate quicker. Get these guys moving forward here. Got these troops here cut off. Let's go ahead and get them destroyed now. With all these green army troops here. All right, excellent. So wiping them out. We've already taken care of that as well. We're going to move these. Uh, I mean, we don't really have the rails here, so there's not. And I don't even think these will connect till we take that. Yeah, so there's not really a whole lot we can do with the rail guns. I figured that would be the case simply because, you know, there's not a lot of rails here. And then, you know, it, you know, you got to wait till you get them flipped over to your side as well. And it's such a huge uh, front, too. So I knew that was going to cause some issues. I would cut these guys off here. Excellent. Um... Now it's just about getting them destroyed, so let's go ahead and work on that. And we're going to have them keep on pushing forward and thickening this front up a bit. Alright, so Americans continuing to advance here. I'm hoping our bombing will get us some points. It just really depends on how long we're able to bomb. Uh, these guys here are cut off. So now it's just a matter of, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and start attacking now. Since we already got troops going up behind them to take all that territory. Uh, let's go ahead and push forward here. And just again, make sure our troops are always pushing forward. Anybody sitting still, got to get them moving. 
All right, so we'll get that guy surrounded with this guy here. We got another tank unit here that can push up towards that victory point. Let's go and make sure he does that. Uh, this guy here, let's put him over on this front. Maybe reduce this. No, I guess we can leave it as is. It's fine. Uh, we already took their capital. I'll have to see how much longer it's going to take to get them to capitulate now. There's still a lot of territory left to take. Um, we're at 89%. 89%. All right, so we'll advance over this way, and go ahead and also take this, and he'll go here. We'll have these guys go over here, and we need one unit to go take out this location here for us. Uh, also, we had another battle over here. Again, I'm hoping to sink some ships. Uh, again, sinking the, the convoys is great because these are all troop convoys, but it doesn't help us in points at all, unfortunately. I'm just trying to get as many points as possible so we actually can play some role in the treaty. I don't know that we're going to be able to, though. China has so many points that I think they'll just kind of do whatever they want in the peace treaty. And that's to be expected, given how long they've been in this conflict. It's not really all that surprising that they would have all the points. Alright, so we'll gra go ahead and grab those provinces. Uh, this guy, let's just move him over here. So he's at least doing something. I don't know if there's anybody here. Oh, we've already we've already won that. Okay, um, Manchukuo has just capitulated. Okay, so they've given up all their stuff. Uh, a lot of that, unfortunately, went to China, who we do not have military access to. All right, so that's a real shame. We can grab this stuff up here, but honestly, this is all going to be kind of messed up now. Yeah, we'll wrap that up. But yeah, you can't really do anything in these uh, provinces here that they control. We can still push forward here, though, and of course we can continue to push forward into Korea. Uh, so the, the the main problem here is that that's going to reduce the amount of territory that we're capable of taking. Uh, let's just go and go all along the coast with this light tank. So he'll go along that coast while this guy goes up along here to cut them off from being able to... Uh, we'll take that one province, of course. But to cut them off from being able to enter here, uh, the Chinese, I mean. And any territory that we can take, we will. Let's go and grab that one. Uh, a lot of this front here, I mean, we can go ahead and attack here. But a lot of this front is just going to be abandoned. Right, let's go ahead and get these guys coming over to... We have enough troops there, I think. Uh, just over to this front. With the exception of the ones that were already, like, you know, moving forward here. Uh, over here, we'll grab those two, but won't be able to get that one. We'll fix that border once we get to it. Uh, go ahead and push forward here, though, immediately. To try and grab these up before the Chinese get over here. We'll grab as much as we can, anyway. Uh, any of these fronts here. Yeah, it's kind of uh, difficult to tell what's going on over here. We want to put all of them over there, and then... So this guy. Yeah, this guy goes over here as well. Just get rid of all of these these fronts, I think. Is it this front here? Okay, so they end up having two. <laughs> Let's get rid of that then. Kind of confusing here. It's a mess, honestly. So where is this blue army front? Do they not have one here? They might not. Uh, which, In which case, we'd want to go ahead and give them one. Uh, maybe not cover this though. Now this is obviously overkill. This is not necessary. Oops. Uh, we don't want anybody who's currently attacking. This is going to be troublesome here. Yeah, if they're attacking, we don't want them assigned over here. Uh, any of these troops here? I mean, we're just going to get rid of all these fronts, frankly. Yeah, just get rid of all this. And some of this is going to be a little bit messy, of course. Still, that's all right. We'll slowly get it cleaned up. Yeah, like this here. And yeah, we'll get it all cleaned up, guys, eventually. Uh, like these guys here, we'd want to put down onto this front. Just get them moving down there as quickly as they can. Same thing with these ones. Let's get them moving over here as well. Let's see what we got here and here. Yeah, all these guys are going to have to be reassigned, frankly. Oops, we want to go up this way and then back down. Uh, we can have this guy go down this way, I suppose. 
All right, so I suppose that's fine for now. Well, I guess I suppose we do have to get rid of these. We'll just wait. We need to, to finish moving into some of these areas. Uh, let's see what we did over here. Another hip, another troop convoy sunk. All right, so yeah, all those Japanese troops are being engaged and and uh, destroyed in the sea. Uh, advancing into Korea, I think, is the key here now uh, for getting points. Let's go and attack there, see if he can't get there first. Uh, this guy go as well. And then let's attack over here. Uh, he's already done that, so we'll have him attack there. Just trying to beat the Chinese over there. Also, there's a location here. I didn't see, so let's go ahead and get some troops coming over here to take that. Uh, we can only attack into the locations that are up on our borders, of course. Yeah, just try and get all of Korea taken, but I mean, this is only so many points. I mean, you can only do so much. We're going to take that location after he leaves. Uh, we got the Stalin's Cult of Personality, uh, which gave us some propaganda uh, campaigns, also some little power. Uh, for the next thing, I suppose we can do the, the Finland one, 70 days. I don't even know if we'd get it completed. Uh, but if it does result in war with the Allies, because this war will likely be over by then, we're not going to do the war with the Allies. Uh, and, of course, one problem we have is we just do not have very many civilian factories. Yeah, the uh, civilian factories are all being hogged up by some of those modifiers that we have. Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and do the Secure Finland, because that fires the Soviets' demand, Karelia. And maybe they'll just give it to us. Now, we lost 15 destroyers here. <laughs> and a submarine. It didn't sink any Japanese ships. Wow. That was quite the unfortunate battle there. Uh, lost another eight submarines here. All right, so our uh, ships are getting their butts kicked in the seas. Uh, I mean, it's the Japanese. It's not surprising at all. Yeah, really not surprising here, considering. So I, I suppose you could put them back on patrol. But yeah, it doesn't really matter at this point, guys. We have lost a ton of, absolute ton of ships here. Do convoy raiding here. Yeah, we lost a lot of ships against the Japanese without sinking any, which is what I was really hoping, just to get points. I mean, that's the only reason why I was really engaging there. I knew our fleet wasn't great, but I was thinking we could get some points, but that is not how this has been going down. We haven't sunk a single Japanese ship. We sunk their convoys, of course, but that doesn't get you any points. Uh, let's go this way. Again, just trying to advance into their territory and take as many of the provinces as we can, because that all gives us uh, the points that we need. Are advancing up this way, and their troops are also pushing forward, which is allowing us to expand into some of this territory here. I almost want to let them take more territory. It's going to take them so long, though. Let's just destroy them. Yeah, I don't think he would end up getting all this before the Chinese came over here and destroyed them. Maybe not. But, I mean, we're, we're already controlling this one here, which is what it's part of. Now, given every province you take will increase, you know, your occupation points that you get. But it's not much. Not much for non-victory point provinces. Did sink more convoys here, but again, just not uh, sinking any actual ships. Not surprising the Japanese are kicking, kicking our butts in the sea. That surprises nobody. All right, so they're going to go down along the coast here, just grabbing provinces for the sake of points. Just trying to get as much as I can before the war ends here. So I'm just looking at where we're at now. I mean, if we can get to like 1%, then we're at 3%. Okay, so we might be able to take something. We'll see. Uh, the Japanese are currently at 48% towards capitulation. Yeah, I'm really hoping. Oh, we can't take that. Uh, so let's go ahead and take any troops. Have them come over to this location. And go ahead and get rid of these. See what else we can get rid of. This one's another one that can be gotten rid of. So let's go and delete that. Um, over here, we could probably get rid of all of these. And put them over into this location. Uh, probably gonna have issues with supply and stuff. Yeah. Can we advance any further in here? Yeah, we're grabbing that one as well. Okay, so all that's getting us victory points. You know what? They might even push forward this way. Japanese still have troops over there, perhaps. Maybe, yeah, it looks like they are pushing forward. So maybe they'll reconnect this, and then we'll be able to uh, get some more points going that way. We'll see. Yeah, getting our butts kicked in the sea. And we also lost here. Now, given these troops are not great, 
at attacking, but I'm really trying to get control of this. But we got to go all the way down and get that victory point, I think, to get control. Yeah, it's all hatchy over here. Yeah, and we'll just let them advance here. And um, what we're going to do is let's stretch these fronts like so. And then only cover that area. Yeah, that's it. But just whatever we got here. Uh, we do still have an area here to attack. We'll go straight across to it. See how many more ships we lost. <laughs> we lost uh, another submarine here. So yeah, the Soviet fleet has been devastated. Just absolutely devastated here. Uh, as far as ciphers go, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I suppose you can go after Finland. We'll see if we even get that focus done. It really depends on how quickly the Americans get the Japanese homeland conquered. Again, they've been pushing forward pretty rapidly so far. Uh, yeah, we'll keep doing these, I guess. I mean, it doesn't really truly matter at this point. But yeah, we'll keep doing them. Uh, a note about the, uh, the patron vote. Right now, last time I looked at it, we are tied up between India and the United Kingdom. I really thought India was going to win it, but now the United Kingdom is tied up. Last time I checked, anyway, that might change. Uh, a lot of patrons have been voting much later than usual. Uh, looks like we can now dip into their territory here. Uh, so we want more divisions coming over this way, I think. We'll even take a couple of these guys, put them over here. Oh. Yeah, just get some more troops coming over here. Uh, I know that we have... Uh, he's already coming over here. Let me get this guy going over here as well. Yeah, we'll try and advance into this territory. There's actually some Japanese divisions here. They might even be able to reconnect this. But you can see the Chinese pumping into this way. So we definitely want to try and push forward there. I almost want to let him go forward though. See if he does. If he's able to win there. Wait till we get more troops over here as well. Supply is in an absolutely garbage situation. Which is not surprising. All those railroads have to be flipped over to us. And you know, we're not even going to mess with factories or anything like that anymore. Because there's really no point. This guy's trying to take off. Let's not let him do that. Uh, the Japanese did bring troops over here. We we knew that. Uh, and we just lost the pride of the fleet, the battleship, the heavy cruiser, the light cruisers. We lost the entire fleet. Uh, I'm surprised they went out there. I guess they went out there to help the submarines. So our Navy's getting its butt kicked over here by the Japanese. We'll go ahead and pull them back, guys, because clearly this is not uh, doing anything. I have them out here because I want them to get us. Yeah, we lost, I think, all of our capital ships, didn't we? I wanted to, to get some points. It's not a lot. But yeah, I figured it could could help uh, getting ourselves some points here by sinking a few ships. Uh, but that was completely ineffective, and that's because our naval bombers can't reach the majority of this region, so they're not even helping us, unfortunately. I also thought we'd be getting some assistance from the Allies, but that has not been the case either. I'm assuming they're only on this side of things. And so yeah, our fleet got their butts kicked here at the end. Uh, it's a pretty garbage, old, outdated fleet, so I forgot I wasn't going to mess with the factories anymore. Uh, but yeah, not, not surprising at all. Not surprising. But yeah, light tanks pushing forward. I imagine they're going much slower than they would normally be able to go. Uh, and yeah, they're getting troops over here. Let's just go and advance ourselves. And push them, push them back. Because you can see that, yeah, psh, I should have already went. You can see that they're coming up behind them. It must be just this one unit here. All right, so that's kind of a shame. And I think we'll get there first. Maybe. These guys are moving super slow. So maybe not. You know, for light tanks, I mean, they're moving super slow. Um, yeah, I guess we're going to have this guy go over here and grab all this. And he will go this way. Let's go up along the coast here, grab that location there. I guess you can go all the way across if no ships block you. And then go ahead and grab these provinces here. But yeah, just try and get all Korea taken. And uh, I'd love to get this taken as well, so let's try now. We've got more troops to kind of help us do that. It looks like this... Oh, no, no. I was going to say, it looks like we have gotten pushed back here. Uh, probably losing more submarines here. Yes, sir. That's well, another submarine there, but I'm not going to stop. We're sinking troop convoys. They're trying to get across. Stopping them from going to Japan, which is going to let the Americans get them uh, finished up sooner. 
And every one of these ships we're losing, that's casualties too. Uh, ship casualties count as casualties, so helps us get points. I imagine we're probably taking fairly high casualties. I mean, I guess there's not that much manpower on ships, especially submarines. Uh, 1.7 thousand total here, uh, while we've killed 188 thousand. Good god. That is like a ridiculous kill death ratio. Is that like 100 something? <laughs> that's insane. Uh, there's 71% towards capitulation. I can't believe we killed so many Japanese troops. Uh, I know we sunk quite a few in the convoys, but good god. Yeah, that is way worse than I expected it to be. I'm going to attack across here. Yeah, that is like really, really bad for them. Uh, hopefully you should be able to grab control of that before the war ends. And everybody just keeps on leaving here. I'm not entirely sure why. And this guy, once he gets over here, well, I'm going to grab that province. Cut this uh, one Japanese division off. Uh, actually, you know, we're going to attack him here since he's trying to leave. Is there anything else over here? There is not. We'll keep him there, though, just because I think supply is going to become an issue here. And frankly, we don't really need any more troops here. It's not a matter of not having enough troops. And they have one division to stop us, so it's not really a problem. Uh, we'll just go over to this province. Oh, never mind. Attack here then. And the light tank should still be uh, going down that way. Alright, he's going to advance over here. He's moving pretty quick. Uh, faster the tanks. Uh, everybody's moving super slow due to the lack of supply here. You want to attack that guy, get him destroyed. And have this guy go over here. And they are still bringing divisions across the sea. I don't know why. Like, you should be defending your own home territory there. Hey, we actually sunk some Japanese ships. They came close enough to our naval bombers that we got to sink them. Uh, one destroyer and one heavy cruiser. I mean, we did something there. We lost our entire fleet to do it, but yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty bad. The Russian fleet has again been embarrassed by the Japanese. <laughs> It's not the first time in history that's happened. <laughs> I feel bad. I feel bad for our ships, man. It's not their fault. But they were given orders that they had no chance of completing. Go engage that very large Japanese, probably much more modern fleet. Uh, so yeah, I didn't assume that would go well, but but yeah, I didn't think it would be that bad. Uh, we will be able to take this, so that's good news. I don't think it's considered controlled, yeah, until you get the victory point, because these aren't victory points. Uh, so despite the fact that you have two of the three provinces of the state, you actually have to take the last one. Uh, so we'll get that done. Uh, Japan is probably very, very close to capitulation at this point. And again, us occupying this territory will help make sure that the, uh, you know, if anybody tries to take it, China or the allies, then it's going to be very costly for them. I thought I had this unpaused. So it'll be very costly for him, but, you know, that's... So often, as we've seen before, that's not enough to stop it. Uh, stop them from taking it. Let's have this guy go over here. Or come on over this way, actually. Alright, so he's advancing over here. Tank continues. We'll just go right, have him go right here for now. They keep on pumping divisions into this port. That's interesting. I almost want to let them go... But I guess the point here is just to get this done quickly, isn't it? I suppose he should just go here. And we'll go ahead and grab all this. Whichever way is the quickest, I suppose. I can go grab that for us. His tanks are moving stupidly slow due to lack of supply. Attacking across the river here. I don't even want to do that. Let's just keep it as is. Let the tank get down to here. Give us another avenue to attack from. All right, uh, so another battle over here. Uh, we lost a submarine. Six destroyers were lost here as well, but not much for the Japanese being sunk. Uh, but it looks like we are engaging those uh, ships more with our naval bombers, uh, but only really sinking the convoys right now. Uh, two destroyers sunk here. I don't know if we sunk those, though. All right, so yeah, the Japanese fleet is, is losing some ships here. Americans moving rapidly, uh, very rapidly. Uh, so... They're probably mere moments from capitulating at this point. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so they will capitulate any moment. Uh, luckily, we were able to seize control of this here, so that will be occupied by us. Um, here, we also occupy that. All right, fantastic. 
So we'll get bo control of both of those. Or, you know, we have control of both of those. But we'll have to see what we can do in the peace treaty, because, again, China's going to completely control it. Uh, it looks like they were able to do most everything, actually. Except for that. That might be the only thing we get here, which doesn't surprise me again. Um, there is this territory here, but that's going to take a million points to get. So both the Chinese and the Americans have taken their turn, you know, uh, annexing states, satellite countries. China has Taiwan. Okay. So we'll have to see what the world looks like. Uh, we should be able to get this. <laughs> Let me see if I can get this 882 points now. <laughs> I didn't think so. Uh, what about this over here? We can get this. All right. It'll take that island from the Japanese. Uh, which is actually a series of islands here. So yeah, we'll take all those over. Why not? Why wouldn't we? Uh, I think that's all there is for us to get to. Um, well, there's 17 points here, but we can't get that. We just don't have enough points. Uh, so yeah, we'll take both of those. I mean, you could probably get this one instead. Yeah, you can get that one instead. Uh, but yeah, I think it makes more sense for us to get this one. It's just, you know, uh, it's right up on our uh, coastline here. So we'll just take those two. There's not really anything else to be done here. Uh, so let's go and enter turn and take a look at how the world looks. At, at the very least, we got this. That was like the bare minimum I wanted to get in this treaty. I would have liked to have been able to deal with Korea since we took that. But it uh, looks like China. Uh, annexed all Manchuria and Korea. They look kind of weird, honestly, since they don't have the, the control of the rest of these these warlord states here. Uh, Indochina has been broken up, and they are all subjects of China. That's interesting. So back to like the uh, you know the tribute system down here. All right. So yeah, this is all China's faction now. You'd have to get all your troops out of here and stuff if you're going to continue to play. I don't, I don't think there's any real reason. How close are we? I don't think there's any real reason to, to continue the campaign just to get Finland and, and potentially result in a, a full-on conflict. And uh, I'd have to pull all these troops out. All these troops out of here. So I don't think we're going to do that, guys. We've gotten some stuff. We got a little bit in the treaty. Probably not worth the effort. Manpower lost, though, of course. I mean, we only lost maybe like... 2,000-something men. Not not much. Uh, there are non-aggression pact offers here. And even some lend-lease offers. Of course, all these would be pulled back since we're no longer in a shared conflict. Yeah, I mean, we got something out of the peace treaty. I don't, again, I don't know that it was worth the effort that we put into it, but we didn't lose that many men to get that. Uh, you know, in Soviet terms. You know, maybe 3,000 men, if that, to get, uh, you know, a little bit of territory. Again, not much. Well, we lost our fleet, I suppose. So there's that. That was a huge loss for the Russians and probably embarrassing as well uh, to lose to the Japanese in the seas again. I feel like they can't say too much about it considering how we uh, stomped all over the, the Axis with very little allied help. Yeah, this is essentially the world. I did want to take a look and see what happened in the treaty. You know, we looked at what China did over here. Uh, but who is Japan a subject of? The United States. They're now a supervised state for the United States. So the state of Japan, democratic. So uh, as it happened historically, they have uh, given up to the Americans here. I wasn't sure it was going to happen because China had so many points. Uh, but the Americans were stacking their points up as they're taking victory points here. So they likely had a decent number of points. Uh, you got some other subjects here. The Mariana Federation. Uh, over here you got the Federated States of Micronesia. So yeah, a lot of the Japanese islands have been freed up rather than annexed. Okay, so that's what you got here. This is their total island number here. This is all the islands they have for the Federated States of Micronesia. So that's what the Pacific Theater looks like now that Japan has been defeated. And I believe the world is at peace right now. Yeah, the world is at peace. All the wars have been finished up. Uh, we could have went and done this here. Uh, frankly, we still needed to, to do some stuff. We actually just started building uh, you know, these supply hubs now. Uh, I suppose you can cancel these. You don't need those anymore. But yeah, you still got to build these two supply hubs. And frankly, this is 
I don't think worth uh, keeping the campaign going, particularly because I think they would end up joining the Allies, which would, you know, result in us having a lot more fighting left to do, which I'm not really interested in doing for this one. Uh, I, I typically aim now to have about 20-something videos, like at least 20 videos for a Hoi 4 series. That's, you know, the hope. Sometimes it's a little bit shorter than that because we do really well or have very limited goals or something. I feel like 20 videos is like the minimum you want to do for a, a Hoi 4 campaign. Uh, but then I try and keep it below 30 videos. That's my, my goal for these campaigns now. Because uh, I noticed at right about 20 is when the views really start dropping off. People typically don't want to watch past 20. And then by 30, they've often dropped you know, much, much lower. So I feel like 30 videos is probably too much for most people. Uh, as I know a lot of our longer series have gone 30-something, 40-something videos. And so I'm trying to, to reduce that. Over the last year or two, I've been trying to reduce it. So we're in like 20-something uh, total. So that's where we're at right now. And if we were to attack the Allies, then we're adding a stupid number of videos. Frankly, because while well, France will fall quickly, you know, we'll easily overwhelm France. You know, pushing to Belgium, Luxembourg, France. We could easily do that. I remember, they don't even have the Maginot at all. It's not under their control. I don't know that that's been destroyed. Now, it hasn't been destroyed at all, so we would have that too, so they can't even... We could just let them try and exhaust themselves here if we wanted to, but yeah, I don't see any uh, issue being able to push forward here without their forts. They don't have a lot of troops to stop us, and so yeah, we'd be able to push forward here and get them knocked out fairly easily. Uh, also, this is part of the Allies' the civil ways, so you can push forward here. Uh, the Italians could, or we could, uh, through their territory, so we could very easily destroy France, you know, get them to capitulate. Uh, Britain would be a little bit harder though because we have no fleet and, and uh, you know we'd have to do the paratroopers which you know our air force isn't fantastic but has grown in size uh, we're now at 5,000 planes I mean we really have stepped up the count there haven't we uh, but look at the British force this is stupidly ridiculous the British always build an uh, insane number of planes and so winning the skies is not likely and because Japan isn't taking their territory over here you know they'll still have the the oil and you know we have no fleet to cut off their oil so you're not even going to win that way although there's no way they can put that many planes in the sky i don't think with their fleet well, i think oil would be too much of an issue but maybe not they have the americans on their side so yeah invading would be a, a very difficult because it's gonna be you know almost impossible to use paratroopers because of their control of the skies uh very difficult to do invasions because of their control of the seas and then, you know, we're pretty far off from nukes because it's only 1943. I mean, it's it's almost 44. Uh, but yeah, you don't even have the nukes to try and help you out, you know, on these fortified port provinces, which are likely going to be highly defended by British and American troops uh, and Commonwealth troops. So you're going to face invasions all over the place. You're going to have to defend against. So you got to just defend all your ports. I don't know. I think uh, it'd be pretty boring, honestly. Uh, it would be a quick conquest of France. And then from there, it's just trying to invade the UK. And then after you do that, if you complete that, however you do it, which is going to be kind of challenging considering the fact that they're not fighting anybody else but you now. And once you figure out how you can invade them and you get it done, uh, which is probably more luck than anything else, finding an open port or maybe using the Mulberry uh, Harbors, the new addition where you don't have to have a port to maybe take a, a non-port province and have some success with that until you can grab a port. Uh, and maybe, maybe you can get it done, but now you got to invade the Americans, uh, which is very difficult without any fleet. Uh, so yeah, if we were gonna do that, I would've started building the fleet a long time ago, but I, I knew I wasn't going that route. Uh, so if we were, we would've been building fleet for a while, you know, building the dockyards, getting everything we need to get in the text, really shifting focus over to the text. And so that's why it's gonna take an insane amount of time because now we have to shift focus over to Navy uh, and, and uh, continue building the Air Force up as well. But I feel like we're doing pretty well in that regard. Uh, now at uh, 5,000 planes, of course, can't compete with the British and the Americans like they have a huge air force as well. Yeah. So overall, uh, you're going to have quite a bit of difficulty in the skies. I mean, even the French probably have like half of the force we have and they capitulated. Uh, so yeah, I think you're going to have a lot of difficulty. You're not like we got a lot of uh, allied planes here. The Germans probably still have some. Yeah, they're 4.8 thousand. I guess the Italians would too. I suppose we do have all our puppets here, so you'd have some help in the sky there. I don't think it'd be enough though, honestly, because you wouldn't have enough air bases to, to even do it anyways. Yeah, it's going to be incredibly challenging uh, doing it, uh, but you could. I, I just think it'd be really long. I think it'd take like 10, 15 videos. Who knows how long to be able to get both the United States 
and the British capitulated. Uh, and then you're so late in the game at that point, many of the Commonwealth states, like Australia or whatever, or even Canada, we've seen that happen, um, or even India, uh, could end up becoming uh, considered major powers is based solely off your number of factories. And so they could become major powers, and you got to invade all them as well. So we're talking about a huge increase to the length of the campaign. Uh, so yeah, we won't be doing that, obviously. We're going to be starting the new campaign. And again, last I looked, it was tied between India and Britain, I'm going to give it another day or so to see if the tie will break. If not, we'll have a, a tiebreaker. Yeah, I put the tiebreaker up. You know, I'll probably put the tiebreaker up on Saturday. Yeah, uh, on Christmas Day. So if the tie is still there on Saturday, we'll, we'll put the tiebreaker up and uh, then we'll leave it up for a few days. So basically, if, 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 it doesn't, if the tie doesn't break, then the campaign would start later than I would like. Probably, God, I've got to give it a few days. So Tuesday or Wednesday, probably Tuesday or Wednesday is what I would think. Uh, but if the tie is broken uh, before then, then I assume we'd start maybe Sunday, but probably Monday. Because I really like to do Sunday, but I only have uh, Saturday to record. And so I'd have to record two videos, one for Sunday and one for Monday. And I wouldn't be able to record again until Monday. And so it might just be better to, on Saturday to record one video and then put it out on Monday. Uh, yeah, that might be what we ended up doing, guys. Because yeah, otherwise I'm, I'm not entirely sure how to get a Monday episode out. And I don't want to put an episode one out. And then we not have a, an episode two the next day, you know, and then you got to wait a, a day before the next next video. So I think it'd be better to probably just start it on Monday. Yeah, I'll record that first episode on, on Saturday and we'll put it out on Monday. That's what I'm assuming is going to happen if we we uh, don't have the tie. Uh, if we have the tiebreaker, then it would start a few days later, probably Wednesday. Uh, so Monday or Wednesday is what I would expect based on whether or not that tie is broken. Uh, if uh, India wins, you know, I think we'll probably play as Communist India. So it'll be a communist country again, because uh, that's the route I've been saying that we were going to go with India for some time, because uh, they've been on many, many patron votes. Uh, so yeah, I think we'd probably go with the communist route. But we definitely would not be loyal to the British. We wouldn't stay as a subject. I wouldn't want to do that. But yeah, I think we'd probably do the communist route for them. Uh, as for the British, if they end up winning, there's... Uh, quite a few different directions I'm willing to go. We, we wouldn't do democratic. We've already done uh, the democratic British. We wouldn't do uh, fascist either. We've done that route too. Uh, so it would have to be one of the routes we haven't gone, uh, which would be either the King's Party or the Communist one. Uh, those are the two we haven't done as Britain. And there might be... Is there another one on the route? I think it's just the... Because, yeah, this is the democratic one. Steady as she goes. And you have the change in course... Which is, yeah, the King's Party, uh, the fascist one, and the communist one. So, yeah, I think it would be either one of these two. Uh, the King's Party or concessions to the trade unions if, if the United Kingdom wins. We'd go with one of those two. Uh, let me know down in the comments uh, which one you'd like to go with of those two if the United Kingdom happens to win. So maybe I'll put that out on Patreon. Maybe that'll influence uh, voters. Let them know which campaign we'd go with on uh, the UK and India, particularly if we have the if we have another vote, a runoff vote, then I would I would let people know which which campaign we're going with so they can they can vote for that. Or even we could have uh, multiple directions. I suppose I could have like four options, two for the UK and two for India. Uh, get people more choices, patrons more choices. A lot of ways we can do that. You know, maybe we won't even need a runoff vote. That's a possibility as well. Because uh, I've, I've noticed that patrons are still voting. They've been voting over the last two or three days. Uh, we've been having like two or three patrons every day vote. So yeah, maybe uh, maybe we won't even have a runoff vote. Maybe just one of those two will end up winning. And uh, then we'll be starting that on Monday. But yeah, I enjoyed the campaign quite a bit. The Soviet Union is a lot weaker than they were before. Uh, their start is anyway. But I feel like their capacity, well, first of all, they have so many choices and options. I mean, you're just not going to get through this focus tree. There's just not enough time. you got to make choices which route you're going to go. There's an absolutely massive focus tree you're not going to get remotely close to getting it done. I mean, we've been going through this the whole time. And you can see how many focuses are open here uh, in the very end the very end of 1943. Now, obviously, this campaign, as far as years go, uh, which is, you know, the main controller with how many focuses you get done, since you know, it takes a certain amount of time to get them done, we're not that far. Uh, you know, Typically, we'd play into 44, 45, and maybe even into 46 or later uh, in, a, in a campaign where we go through World War II as a major power. So it's, it's very surprising with, first of all, how quickly we defeated the Axis and, and thus 
how much shorter year-wise the campaign is. So this is not the best example of how far you can get because if we had played another two years, we would have obviously got quite a bit more focuses done. But still, you're not getting through them all. It's like impossible. I think you'd have to take, I don't know, go into 48, 49, 50. I don't know how long it would take to get all of them done or, you know, the majority of them done, uh, all the ones you can uh, it'd take a long time because uh, there's so many focuses. And so just a lot of options and choices. I really like that. Uh, the focus tree here is fantastic, honestly. Now, some things I, I don't like about it, uh, this here I feel like is a big mistake uh, on Paradox's part. You just spend far too long on trying to get rid of the paranoia system. I just feel like it should take a while, but is the best route to do that by giving you a ton of focuses you have to go through? Or instead, why not locking them to, you know, you can't do them until, like they already do, you can't do them until a year after you did the last one. Or uh, maybe you can't do them to a certain date or something, whatever. A lot of people don't like the arbitrary dates. Uh, so yeah, maybe you take one and you can't do the next one until another year. Uh, it just doesn't seem like it's, it's necessary to have so many focuses dedicated to this, this mechanic and removing it. Just far too many. So I don't like that. That's one of my main issues with the focus tree. But outside of that... I really like the focus tree. I think it's pretty good. I like it. It gives you a lot of choices. It's a lot of fun to, to figure out how, which route you want to go and what you want to get. And again, it's, it's all about choice since you can't go through through all of them. So the choice isn't like, what do I want to get now? What do I want to get later? It's what do you want to get? Because you might not be able to get certain ones. It's very interesting how weak the Soviet Union is in the beginning, uh, particularly if you go down the, the Stalin route. They're pretty weak, uh, which is an issue I had with the Soviet Union before as they already had massive capacities to be very, very powerful due to the, the sheer amount of land and manpower and resources they have, and factories that, you know, the ability to build the factories. So, I mean, they already had uh, the ability to be incredibly powerful in the future, that potential, uh, which the Soviet Union should have. But then they were also not that weak. Uh, you know, obviously under the AI, they sucked. Uh, AI Soviet Union was horrible, easy to take advantage of. And uh, didn't, just didn't play very well. I had a lot of issues uh, covering their front. Uh, so AI Soviet, Soviet Union was not very good. Uh, we kind of ran over them so many times over the many years in our campaigns. And I, and I can't really say yet how well the AI plays with the Soviet Union. Because I've only done... I haven't done even one full campaign to see yet uh, where I wasn't playing as the Soviet Union. Because so far with the patch I've done four campaigns. And two of them I didn't finish. Because uh, those are my two test ones that I did before we started here. And then, you know, this one, one of the full full ones here, we played as the Soviet Union. And then the other one I'm, I'm still playing right now. Uh, I'm playing as France uh, in a little uh, off-camera playthrough. I'm going to monarchy rounds, but this time not going with Napoleon as we did in our, our uh, Let's Play. I'm going to go with one of the other monarchs. Uh, so I think there's two different options I can do, but I haven't gotten that far in the focus tree. That's the route I'm going. I'm going to go with uh, the Monarchist route, and I've actually made it to like the whole world as, as Monarchist. Uh, everybody who can go that route is going it. So we're going to have a bunch of monarchies, and I'm gonna, we're going to duke it out in Europe. So I haven't got far enough to say how the Soviet Union is doing on that one, uh, but they're supposed to go with the, the Tsar. I'm going to return the Tsar. So we'll see how the AI does, or I'll see how the AI does in that one, but I can't really say if they play any better overall. Uh, but... While the AI sucked before with a player, you could do pretty good against Germany uh, fairly well. And I felt like the, the weakness of the Soviet Union at the start of World War II wasn't represented well uh, in the previous version of the game. Well, now it's it's better. Uh, they definitely feel weaker. Uh, they struggle. We saw that when we started. Uh, obviously, we did better than we should have been able to do uh, for mistakes of, on Germany's part, I think. Germany, uh, the AI Germany made many, many mistakes. But we had some trouble. We lost some territory. had to retreat a little bit. Uh, but overall, it was it was a fairly easy conflict against Germany. Uh, far easier than I was expecting. Uh, we didn't lose a lot of territory. And yeah, I mean, having you know all of Romania and Turkey helped. That helped us out in the conflict a bit, I think. But yeah, it was a fun campaign regardless. I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, the, there was a, a point where we were struggling for a while there, and that's always fun. Uh, a lot of back and forth as the uh, Eastern Front should be. Uh, I feel like it should be a struggle. Uh, no, obviously, I felt, felt like the Germans should push forward rapidly for a time, especially with that 15% modifier that they used to have, which is now a 10% attack modifier. Uh, so I feel like they should have pushed forward more initially than they did. Uh, but yeah, they just struggled against us. Uh, we did pretty well 
honestly. And this was big, a situation here in East Prussia, all this, and then into Poland and stuff. That was uh, big for us. But yeah, lots of German casualties. I don't even remember how many it was, with like 10 million casualties or something like that. It was a fun campaign overall, and I'm looking forward to the next one, which again will not be a historical one. We'll have a, a different setup for the world. I wouldn't want to do historical twice, so we're going to do uh, a unique setup with the, the AI uh, focus behavior. I haven't decided exactly what we're going to do, and it also depends, of course, on which country of these two we end up playing with, uh, because the other countries have no chance, by the way. I think... Uh, the third place is Poland, but there's several votes behind both of them, uh, behind both the UK and India. And then France is fourth, and then Spain is in last place. Uh, they did not get very many votes. So yeah, it's really just United Kingdom or India. It'll be one of those two guys, for sure. I don't see anybody else catching up at this point. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that campaign. I hope you guys did enjoy this one as much as I did. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. If you're looking for anything to watch while you wait for the next series to start, check out the front page of our channel. Got 3,000-something videos all sorted by genre. And because I play so much Hearts of Iron 4, there's one section just for the, the Hoi 4 campaigns. We've done 30-something campaigns, maybe 40. I don't even know how many at this point. We've done a lot of campaigns uh, since the game released back in... 2016 so definitely plenty of hoi 4 to watch on the channel but i do play other paradox games as well we got a couple ck3 series a couple ck2 series uh got a couple stellar series those, those are all pretty old i don't really play stellaris as much these days because those series have never been as popular as my uh you know more historical paradox games have uh we played eu4 what was that last year i think that was last year the milan series yeah i believe that was last year i could be wrong exactly when that happened but uh we got that milan series and Played something else a few years back. Uh, England, I think we played. Uh, typically play Hoi 4, though, when it comes to the, the Paradox games. Uh, but we did play some other non-Paradox strategy games recently, including Old World and Humankind. A lot of those uh, turn-based, both of those turn-based 4X-style games. And those are both fun series, particularly the Humankind. That's a long one. Uh, if you've never seen that game, I really like it. Uh, I think it's a competitor with uh, the Civilization series. And I enjoyed it quite a bit. So maybe go check out one of those series if you haven't already. If you're looking for any links, check out the description of any of our videos. You'll find links to our PayPal, Patreon, and Teespring store. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'd definitely appreciate it. You'll also find links to all of our social media. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. And you'll find a link to our Discord if you'd like to join our community. So I do hope to see you guys on another video. And thanks for watching.